Hello, I job Dewey here, and today, uh, it's, it's a Christmas day, and guess what? A little hungry. And, um, last night, gave out the last of my cookies to Santa, so he gave me some presents. And so it's time to make some holiday cookies for today. And what we're doing here, is, uh, normally I do, you know, cookbook reviews, sometimes, from time to time, but, uh, today's recipe is actually this one right here. It's, um, brought to you by... Quaker Oats. As in, it's not a book, but it's on the back of the box. And, um, these are some, uh, they're oatmeal raisin cookies, but I'm going to do a little bit of a change in the recipe. So, what you start out with here is, um, I got a bowl, and inside the bowl here, we got butter. Now, it needs a half a cup and six tablespoons, you can't see it anyway, it's six. Um, of butter, so if you can see here, if you're new, new to baking, whatever, you have a, a stick like this, and um, this comes in uh, four ounces here, and um, usually it's four of these in a pound, right? 16 ounces a pound, but on the side back, whatever, it'll show like a tablespoon, two, three, four, all up to eight, and so half a cup is one whole stick. So I'm gonna chop this up lightly and put it in there. What's already in there is um, to the sixth tablespoon mark. I um, did that and um, for another stick and put it in there. And now this is butter that has been out for a while, so it's kind of softened room temperature. It's winter time where I'm at here. And so this right here, you know, it's softened, is what I'm trying to say. If it's summertime where I'm at, it'd be probably close to melting. And you don't want that. But what I usually do to help things go is uh, give it a little chop. A little rough dice, you know, in you go, butter. Butter. And, um, get in there. And then to add to this, we're going to add our sugars. This recipe here calls for both brown sugar and granulated white sugar. So, in the form of brown sugar is three quarters of a cup packed. So you, and this is also something good that you usually keep this in your fridge to keep it uh, from spoiling or getting bad I guess. Because I guess there's more molasses in your brown sugars. But um, I packed it. So I let it kind of come to room temperature and poured it into this three quarters cup and packed it on down. And then I poured more in and I packed it on down. All right, get all in there. Then we got here some white granulated sugar in the form of half a cup. Sprinkle, sprinkle, in you go. So you have the sugars there, you got the butter, and now it's time to um, get your little hand beater together and whip it together. Bzzz. Now, you guys know how this works. You, might, you have to plug in the wall. So I'm going to go find an outlet to plug this in and do a little bzzz, And um, we'll see what it looks like when we're done with that. Alright, so this ain't quite all the way done, but if you have a mixer that does this, mix uh, clubs, unplug it, or make sure you turn it off, and take a, you know, like I got a little butter knife here, smooth knife, and just, um, you know, work your way in the grooves here to get the uh, butter and the goodness all unclumpered, uh, so to say. Alright, you might have to do this a couple times. You might have, you know, a powerful one or one that doesn't get clumpered. All right, and get off the shafts here. Okay, and then get back to uh, creaming away. Uh, yeah. That's about good. All right, back to creaming away. Okay, so we got all creamy like that. And next, we want to do is add our vanilla in the form of one teaspoon of vanilla extract. So I just kind of pour it over the thing. If a little bit falls in more, that's fine. Um, one teaspoon. There we go. Get that in there. And next goes two eggs. Um, 
I was gonna show you how I can, you know, crack them all fancy with one hand stuff. Until I figured out I don't do that. So, two eggs. I got them right here, see? And they go in. And then go ahead and uh, use the electric mixer again to blend it, blend it all up some more, incorporate the ingredients together. Okay, so I already had some of the uh, flour. It takes one and a half cups of all purpose flour. So, what I just did is I used a half cup, right, like before, and I did three of these to make it one and a half. Get in there. And then uh, next what we got is uh, baking soda. It wants you to have one teaspoon of baking soda. Let me get that measured. And, um, hmm. Almost empty with the baking soda, I guess. Oh, oh. man, if only I could see what happened there. So, one teaspoon of baking soda, just about, and, nah, you don't want to go too low on it, because you don't want your cookies to be too flat, you don't want to go too high, because you don't want them all puffy puffy, or maybe you do want them puffy puffy, I don't know. And, last but not least on this teaspoon, we need a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. So I've got some nice cinnamon here. And just kind of uh you know get in there, level it off. Boom. Teaspoon of goodness. Then I believe you mix on medium again. Always medium on this or hard low. High sometimes if you need it, but um mix on medium to um Get the ingredients incorporated again. All right, so now if anyone's following along on the um, back of the box recipe here, if you have the same box at home, you might have noticed that I have discluded the half a teaspoon of salt. So if you want salt, or uh, think you need it, you can add it to it in that last step, or even now you can probably still add it and incorporate it in here. But um, I don't need salt any more than I already get. So. What we got now is um, three cups of um, oats. And these are actually quick one minute oats by Quaker Oats. You can use the normal um, Quaker Oats. Normal? Let's see. No, no, no. Quaker Oats or a quick old fashioned. Anyways, so I got two cups in there already. Added my third cup in. Um, granted, I could have added them as I mixed, but that's fine. Ooh, I need this here, because now the next step you add in is your one cup raisins, right? And so, you know, ra raisins are healthy and all that stuff, but um, I hate to say this, uh, if you're going to take these cookies to a party or something like that, and you want people to actually eat them, you might put on some festive little um, candies like this here, you see. You know, that right there was um about three quarters of a cup and uh i don't want to be under on my measurement of a cup of something now i don't have like i said raisins here because i don't have anything against raisins per se but oatmeal raisin classic thing like i said if someone wants to eat them you want to put something else in and so we got our uh, oh, cup, uh, about three quarters of a cup of that, and a you know a cup of uh, no not cup, a few of those there to kind of round them out, right? Some uh, chocolate morsels if you happen to have those. Let's say if you ran out of the little uh, festive green and red colored candies, maybe you have some uh, chocolate morsels, but. And yeah, if you want to really watch that, you'd have seen that I probably poured a little bit too many of these in. So let me just take some off the top there and get rid of them. Right? Okay. And now, I'm not going to use this because I want to break up all the candies. 
Okay, so I'm going to uh, use a spoon, a big one here, and I'll start by kind of scraping off these beaters, and then uh, going in it by hand. But it's going to take some energy, so mm, right. Okay, that's enough of that. Okay, take so the hand mixer incorporated in by hand, stirring it up with a spoon, and what I do is that I'll take uh, a few times, take this little butter knife and scrape them off of each other to get anything that might be impacted inside the spoon here. And then, you know, gave it some more stirs, and we got this clump of loveliness. Now, it's going to be time to put some heat on. So, get, prep your ovens up to uh, 350 degrees. And, um,. Let me see here. The talk in here, you bake them 8 to 10 minutes until light and golden brown. And then you cool a minute on the sheet, and then you can put it to a uh, cookie rack, or cooling rack. Um, I'm probably getting ahead of myself, um, but mixed well. Okay, so what I'm doing here is uh, I'll fashion some, uh, some good old silicone parchment paper on a cookie sheet. And, um, hmm, I probably should have done before. Alright. So I got me some, uh, lemon cookie sheet here. So I can get some room. And, uh, basically I'm going to try to take about the same amount. I don't really say how much on this recipe. And oddly enough, it didn't say how much this is going to make, but I'm just going to, um, with clean hands, I can either do two ways. One way, just take a spoon like this or so, and uh, if I want to be all kind of fancy, just plump in like that. Tuck that extra arm in there. Or, I think I can do more hands-on ways. Give me a little ball of it in my hand, you know, do a roll, yeah, and uh, like that. So either way, and um, just continue until your whole sheet's uh, covered, but I think you want them to be spaced apart somewhat. Um, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, space them apart, so that's probably fine. We'll see what happens with them bacon. And, uh, so yeah, oven 350. Alrighty, look at that golden brownish kind of thing looking. Of course, the lighting was better, be better. But we got that. Went some over there, and back in the oven, I uh, already put up two more cookie type sheets, paper, and um, balls of joy, and um, put them in the oven. So these here can kind of cool for about a minute on the cookie sheet. And then uh, I'll transfer them to a water rack to cool completely. Okay, so for me the baking time is about 10 minutes, I believe. But uh, depending on, you know, like I said, 8, start looking at them. I let them go for about the full 10. They have some nice uh, crispness around the side there. Depending on what kind of pans you use, steel, aluminum, um, dark, light, you'll get different results, I'm assuming. But I'm using a few different kinds. And I've, I've since uh, moved them off the pan so they can cool and put it on the rack. But you know what? We got one right here that I found. And, um, you know, warm cookies are pretty tasty. You see? Look at that. You got some morsels in there. Mmm. It's perfect. Not too hot so it doesn't burn my mouth. And, um, not hard. And we'll see if this becomes hard later on when it cools completely. Um, and see it's not charred on the bottom. It's just a nice gooey cookie. Oh, and because of the sizes I made them, I got about 36 cookies made. So, hmm. You know what? I'm tasty. Now, I think there might be a slight texture difference if you use the instant oatmeal oats versus the, uh, like, I don't know, steel cuts or like the thicker oats, the old-fashioned oats. 
you might have more of a, a, a texture thing there, more of a, a density, maybe not. These are good. So, I'm going to say this is a good recipe. Thumbs up on it. Uh, Mr. Quaker, he knows what he's doing when he makes his oats. And, um, yeah, uh, this this particular recipe is not very rare, I wouldn't say. Because on every box of a, the big box of Quaker oats, maybe on the small boxes too. And, um, yeah, any questions, comments, other videos you want me to see, let me know in the comments down below. And I'm just going to, you know, finish up on this here and uh, maybe try another one or two after they've really hardened up. i got about another four and a half minutes before the next batch is out to bring out and uh, do stuff with. So I'll, don't worry, I'll take care of these. You guys make your own. And uh, Merry Christmas. Hope you have a good New Year. Maybe we'll do a New Year video on something, who knows. But um, thanks for watching. Odd Dub Doer, get to snacking.